Okay, fam. As you can see, we're at the bridge. And check this out. This is significant. That blue up thing up there, that marker. That's from the 1937 flood. There's some information here. That's from the 1937 flood. Here's the bridge. Portersville Bridge. Says it was dedicated to the park and on September 30th of 2011. Does that give any history of the bridge on that sign? But you can find out all the information about the bridge and about the park online. They have a lot of detailed information. I mean, it's very well documented. And this is the little river that I was telling you about. 14 Mile Creek, not river, 14 Mile Creek. And this is the creek that they say that there's lost treasure buried around here. To me, this whole place is a treasure. But I think those concrete things on the other side, right over there, I think those are from a, sus a suspension bridge that used to go across there. And that was how people would get into the park. This is beautiful. So that marker back there, you seen how high that was? That's how high the flood was. And um, we got to looking and it was 550,000 people were uprooted from their homes and 130 or 105 dead, 105 people dead. And people used to come here and, and um, cook out when this is a park set on benches in the late 1800s, 1880, 1890. And uh, what's the guy's name that found the business opportunity here? David Rose. David Rose. Uh -huh. a, a wealthy guy named David Rose seen the potential of the island and decided to purchase it. And he turned it into a theme park or amusement park. And they actually have, which you'll see in a little bit, they have Indiana's very first swimming pool and one of the first pools in the world to have filtered water. That's pretty cool. We did a film there last time that we were here um, because you know, that was a place that people love. So we figure if there's spirits gonna be lingering anywhere, there's a good chance they would be there. People love this place. I mean, it was really the only thing like it, so. But anyway, we're getting ready to enter Devil's Backbone. I'll turn you guys back on as soon as we get back there. Okay, guys. Get you, get you some video during the daytime so you can see some of this. There's another one of those markers. Remember how high that one was? It was like at the top of the pole. This one's down here. It's how high up we are right now. But there's other ones that are high up on the pole, so... Let's see, this is a reclamation area. This talks about the suspension bridge. I'm not going to bore you guys with all this. There's a little, there's a little box you could crank. It tells you about the place. See, there's another little tag. It says 1937 flood. And you're, you're essentially in Rose Island Park right now. This, this right here would have been elaborate, big, beautiful buildings. You guys could see pictures of it online. I mean, they had a big dance hall over here. I mean, right here, you would have been seeing big, huge buildings already. And down at the end of this path, they had like bungalows, I guess. I don't know if people purchased them or rented them or what, but I think they were people's homes. Here's a structure here. I have no idea what it went to. But I think there was a building, if, if we viewed the map correctly, there was a building here. Sandy, I think right here, I, I think that path goes back around and that's where the bungalows are. I'm not sure if they were over here or not. Yeah, we're gonna walk down here. I'll just keep you guys with me. Hold on, let me switch around. Anyway, this place is super cool, man. I hope I can do it justice. I mean, it's not really my 
point to give a history lesson. But, uh, I mean, at the same time, it kind of is because that's what tells the story about the ghost that we want to find or the spirits or, you know, whatever your philosophy on the subject is. And that's, that's really, really, to me, it's important. But I don't want to fill the, the video up with too, too much of that because you're here to see the scary, scary stuff. So, or to see us find evidence. It's not just about being scared or having jump scares. I mean, we want to find real evidence. You know, none of that. Oh, did you hear that? What the fuck was that? Okay. All right, let me pause this for a minute. Well, no, hold on. Look, let me show you the creek. That's at 14 Mile Creek, and it's getting ready to open up into the Ohio River. And from here, we'll be staring at Kentucky. And Waverly Hills is just on the other side, fam. All right. Let me pause this, see what we can find. I'll get down here to the end of this path near the Ohio River, and I'll turn you guys back on. Okay, fam, here we are. The creek's opening up into the Ohio River. And I was right. Um, we've come up to where the cottages would have been. Check this out. And this place is labeled. I mean, they've got it labeled. It's super, super cool. Check this out. I mean, they got this place. I mean, it's so cool. They've detailed the history. Look. This is where the cottages would have been. Oh, there's pipes right there, plumbing. So this is where the people would have been living before that flood happened and took away their homes. That's so sad. This place is this place would have been magical. I couldn't even imagine what this was like. It's no wonder people love it so much. But I mean, once you're in here, you're in here. This is this is a heck of a walk. It's a heck of a walk getting out of here. That hill is so steep. Um but one of the biggest ways that people came here was by ferry. Um, or a big, not ferry, but a big steamboat. And there's three, there's at least was three big rock pillars down here that was the welcoming gate for the people getting off of the steamboat. So we're going to see how much of that is still here. Man, I love this place. If I haven't already said that. There's Ohio River, the Ohio River. Over there, Kentucky. That's our Kentucky fam over there. All right, let's see what we can see, if anything. Bunch of woods. Hope I don't get attacked by some kind of bobcat or something crazy. If I do, Sandy will get the video out. If she makes it up the hill by herself. Oh, sorry for the noise, fam. Huh. Well, there's some kind of debris here, but I don't know if that came from these cottages. I guess it could have. Look at that old tree. Wow. I kind of want to break out the spirit box now because this is where people actually lived at. But, and I do know that spirits are also out during the daytime. However, I'm kind of wanting to explore more of this because this place, it's like a hundred, I think it's 128 acres, if I'm saying that correctly. If my memory serves me. Well, I can imagine snakes galore. Oh wow, there's a sinkhole. Look at this. Oh, those trees fell over. Dig it. Be careful over here, trees fell out. There's a big giant hole. Yeah, big sinkhole. All right, y'all. It doesn't help matters that I'm old and wearing a backpack full of stuff. 
this is bypassing the main trail guys so by the time I get to the end of this trail I might have a long walk to get back to the structures but I just I had to see for myself I wanted you guys to see have a little bit of an explore oh I don't know this trail is getting kind of goofy okay Are you okay back there? <laughs> Says she's watching for snakes. All right, looks like we're gonna have a walk. So I'm gonna pause you again. Anything exciting happens, we gotta fight off any wild boar or anything, I'll be sure to kick the camera on after I pull it out of their neck. Okay fam, nothing too interesting, but sign of life there's a stone wall here and over there you can see these hoops that was a part of the dance hall i'll show this to you when we get up here that's pretty cool i don't think we really got a lot of info on the dance hall but it was big and beautiful and they do have a picture of this entire place from back in the day when it was still active and full of people. I encourage you to go look, kind of connect you with the people we'll be talking to this evening with any kind of luck, right? All right, this is the main path. Whew. And you guys, I don't really see much signs of life back here. And I mean, we are way, this is the dance hall. We are way, 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 way back in the woods. Look here. It's beautiful. More of those rocks for the walls. Look at this. Now the swimming pool is over here. There's little plastic things on the pole that say dance hall. Looks like an old, um, I don't know, maybe a water fountain or something over there made of stone. But I'm gonna go down this trail. So here in a minute, I'm gonna pause you guys again. Cause it's a really long walk as you can see, but I've never been down here. We bear, we got to this part where we're at now, last time we were here. And we did some spirit box sessions at the pool for the obvious reasons that we discussed. So now we're gonna go explore a little more cause there was other buildings here. Here's a sign. I want you guys to see this so you get an understanding. You know, these be some of the people may, we may end up speaking to. I mean, this place, even in modern times, is not many people around. It's small. There's another one of the 1937 flood signs. It's that high up off the ground. There's the rest of the pole. Remember that one was up that high. Okay. All right. There's another one up here, but uh, another flood sign. I think you guys have seen enough. You start to get an understanding. Well, those are pretty low. There's one there. There's one there. So I'll show you this one because it's up a little higher. And it's only, you know, 100 feet away from it, <laughs> maybe. Over there is the swimming pool. Now, I told you it was like one of the very first. It was the first swimming pool in Indiana one of the very first in the world to have filtered water so i mean you can imagine why i want to do our spirit box session and kind of focus on that area now look how high up that flood sign is that's how the different elevations are oh and there's more cottages here i see another cottage sign okay so we were kind of on it there's the cottages some more of the people we'll be talking to this evening And if you guys want us to come back here, depending on what we get tonight, just talk to me down in the comments. It's important you guys leave comments and interact with me and help my channel grow if you would. But we'll see what happens tonight. And maybe you uh, can leave me some ideas of questions to ask the next time we come here. Because, you know, I really want to try to work on, look how high this flood sign is, guys. Look at this. There's the bottom of the pole. 
that flood came all the way up to there. We're already that much lower. I'm not gonna walk. Ooh, look. I wonder what this was. I hope you guys can see that. See that little, it's like a really small foundation. Wow, look at all that, those knots on that tree. That is creepy. And I'm telling you guys, I can hear birds a little far away, but oh, here's another wall. I wonder what this was before it was a path. This looks, looks like maybe a pond or something would have been here. Maybe a retention for water, I don't know. I really don't know. If you have any ideas, let me know. But I see stones that are organized, obviously, by people all across this path. So I'm assuming that at one time, this was not a walkway between houses. I mean, this path has been made since this place was abandoned, probably by the park. But I'm gonna walk down here by the river. And I hope this don't get too long because I really want you guys to enjoy the investigation. But I think this part's important and it's interesting for me. Man, they say that you can get a lot of driftwood here that's kind of popular for that and I can completely see why. This place is crazy. I mean, it's creepy as heck. It's creepy to think about the animals. Like I was telling you, I don't hear hardly any animals. Some birds, they seem like they're in the distance. But like the last time we were here, I didn't hear anything until nighttime come around. And a bunch of people, there's only one way in and one way out, and there's a bunch of people at the beginning of the bridge screaming and hollering because we were back here by ourselves at night. And then coyotes started going off. Look at this. Check that out. That is sweet. Glad there's nothing in it. Hey, look at these roots. There's tons of dangers in here. But, um, but yeah, the coyotes were like the only thing I heard and all of that drama was coming from where we had to take the bridge to get the heck out of here. I don't know, guys. I think I'm gonna go back because I'm not seeing anything so far. And I'm not sure if you guys want me to find, I mean, how, how are you into the explorers? I mean, would you want to find these cottages or any remnants? Are you curious? Or are you just kind of into the ghost hunt and would rather bypass all this? If you did, that's fine. I don't blame you if that's what you're into. But for me, I find it fascinating. I'm going to explore this whether I do it on camera or not. Okay. Dump, dump, dump. Oh, boy. Just don't be doing this when you're old. Okay, you probably should, actually. Now that I think about it. I mean, this is a completely different kind of video than I'm used to. And it's way different than what I've got planned, what's coming up. But again, I think this is fascinating. All right, guys, I'm going to pause this for a minute because it's starting to get a little boring to watch on TV. So let me turn you around. I'm going to pause it for a minute. I'll walk around here. If I find anything, I'll let you know. But... I think we've done enough walking, looking for that and, and shooting the breeze. So uh, as soon as I find something, if I find something, I'll spin you back around. If not, let me cut off some of this distance for you. Hey, okay, guys. Well, I guess we FAFO'd. This is super cool, man. I'm glad we did this. I'm glad we came this way. I'm going to flip this around let you guys see what we found. This is cool. Let's see, here we go. Check it out. You guys know what this is? I had discussed this at the beginning of the video. This right here is where they would have been greeting the people coming off of the steamboats. This had like a big sign that went across the top of a big hoop. I believe you can look at the pictures and call me a liar, I don't care. But I believe it said Rose Island on it. And right here at the river, 
Man, this would be a great place to do a little investigation too, guys. I don't know how much walking I want to do at nighttime in this place. It's crazy. We're already like, people wouldn't get to us very quickly at all. But yeah, this is, uh, this is where they would have been getting on the steamboat. Man, and the steamboat was huge and just beautiful. And I mean, packed to the gills with people. I mean, look at that beautiful scenery over there. I hope you guys can see that on TV or on your phones or whatever you're viewing this on. Man. I could spend all kinds of time back here just looking for stuff. I would love to be able to metal detect. That would be amazing. Well, you can see some coyote tracks out here. Man, look at this. I cannot, I mean, it's just, it's kind of creepy knowing that the flood happened and, you know, that steamboat would pull up here with all those people and this place was so loved and, I mean, this is like the King's Island or Disney World of its time. You guys just check it out. I'm gonna get a view of that coming up. Check this out, guys. This has been what they've seen, minus her head. But this had been had had Rose Island up there. And then there's another sign there, and show you what I've seen before I seen these walls. Man, this is so cool. No mushrooms growing back here though. Kind of a bummer. So it's from a child's point of view. A day trip to Rose Island Amusement Park was easily the high point of the summer for many children. Decades later, every detail of the adventure is vividly recalled. Sad. Look, there's a picture of the, of the uh, look at this steamboat, guys. Look at all the people that come here. It is the oh, the name of the, the um, steamboat, Sandy said, was the Idlewise. Oh, wow, you guys, I didn't even see it. Look, bottom of the pole, right? There's the sign. Look, right. Where in the heck? Way up there, on, can you see that? That's where the flood was from here. Right, way up there, look. Can you go stand by the pole? Like I said, there's where they come off the steamboat. Now look. There she is, way up there is where the flood was. That's incredible. Look at the wall right there. There's a wall. Man, I would love to be digging around out here and finding old stuff. I cannot imagine the memories that are in here. Here's what I've seen coming down. We came up that, that path that the cabins were on in the beginning of this and the path got too tore up to take. We came up to the main path back down to that little one where the cottages were, which is down there. This is the main path that we were on by where the swimming pool was. This is the other side of those rings that went through the dance hall. And then this path continues that way. But we're gonna go down the middle. We'll save that for another day to explore. And right here, guys, Bring you some stuff out. I don't know who would want to bring. I'd collect wood out here because I wouldn't be carrying no charcoal or anything this far back. But you can cook. Oh, is it? Let's go check that out. See if there's anything left. Over here is where the hotel for the property was, guys. And I'm talking about when Rose Island was still a thing. When it was a theme park. Look at this. And they've got more information back here. And by the way, guys, it only costs, if you want to come, it only costs seven bucks. It's a state park, but it's in the way, 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 way back in a state park. You got to do some hiking. There's the flood sign way up there. And somewhere right in here, I guess, is where the hotel set. You guys, if you want to pause all this, you can. I try to go slow so you can 
get a chance to hit pause if you choose to look. Talks about the Great Flood. Louisville Street after the flood. Here's the steamboat. Looks like they got a ticket. Here's what the tickets look like. So somewhere in here is the hotel. I don't know if we're standing on it. This is where the sign is, but I don't know if there's, we have to come around here someday and I wish we would have done it last time we were here. I mean, within a few weeks, within a three, four weeks, this place went from no greenery at all to this. So maybe we'll come up here and fish around in the woods one day. Or maybe we'll just um, wait until fall or something, come back out and see if we can find any part of the structure. If, if you guys would like to do that, can you drop that down in the comments? And if you're interested in the Explorer, we'll come back and do that. I think that the stone wall is up there. That might oh, be hey guys. Yeah, good find. I think here's, I think the devil's backbone. I don't know if you can see it, but up on top of that ridge, there is a, fort a stone fortification. And they said it's an artificial stone fortification, meaning that it was put here by, by um, people. And they believe those people were with um, Prince Maddock, I think is his name. They think it was them 322 years before Columbus. Just think about that. And they did, they did find for sure the uh, six skeletons with the suit of armor in the Welsh coat of arms. Just check into it, it's fascinating. I mean, it just seems like, especially for this being in Indiana, being in America in general, and finding something like that, especially a castle, but then to think it was that far below, or before Columbus, I mean, it just, to me, it makes this story abundantly interesting, which makes me want to do the explore. I mean, my thing is, I want to find real evidence of paranormal, and I think this should be a great place for that very thing. But, oh look, here's some other kind of, some other kind of structure. See, you just don't see this kind of stuff everywhere. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I think this is kind of where the adventure meets ghost hunting like perfectly in the middle turn you guys around i feel like this is where ghost hunting paranormal evidence history exploring this is where it all comes together because where do you stop and try to contact somebody back at the castle at the hotel or in the front or in the pool where everybody was having fun in a pool that no one's ever seen before. I mean, you'd feel special, you know? First filtered water, swimming pool. It had a, to us, it seems kind of goofy, but I bet to them it was a big deal, state of the art. All right, I'm gonna pause, man. My arm's killing me, I'm gonna get a drink of coffee. Love you, fam. All right, fam, you guys recognize where we're at. We're uh, kind of back where we started, you know, about midway in. Uh, when we started headed back towards the hotel or when, where we were at when we seen the um, uh, the cottages, the sign for the cottages again. But I'm going to turn you around. We're getting ready to hit the swimming pool. See, we're back here. Right there is where we went back to the cottages. The entrance is that way. You can see those hoops to the dance hall. And here's the swimming pool. Just for a little relevance because like I said, these are people that we're going to be talking to you know you guys got to see the signs and and uh, see some of the people now hopefully we'll come back here and we'll meet some of the people we're going to get our gear set up maybe do a little foraging looking around it starts to get dark we'll start setting up but I want you guys to see this in the daylight first look at this that swimming pool it's been filled with rocks to protect people. They still get people that come back here, obviously. And when it had water in it, which by the way, 
this swimming pool held water for over a hundred years and they finally drained it and filled it with gravel to keep everybody safe. This is the pool now. You can see the steps over here. It's really cool. But um, there's another sign over here. We can see where the flood was here. And on the other side of this, back over in there is a picnic table we'll set up at tonight. See, that's what I mean. I probably should climb that hill and go to that castle and uh, look at doing some EVP work there. But I don't know, this just seems a little more interesting to me right now, like a good place to start. There's the flood line at the pool. And here's the sign. You guys can check it out. There's some more of the people we may meet tonight. Kind of gives an interesting perspective, doesn't it? When you can see the people that were actually here. All right. All right. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down for a minute. I might pick up some photos you guys could check out on Twitter and Instagram. And uh, start hitting that follow button on Twitter for me. And if you're coming over from Twitter, subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this place. Bad or good, everybody's opinion is important. And we can learn from it. So anyway, see you in a minute. Hey fam, welcome to the nighttime portion of our investigation. We decided tonight that we're going to start off in the Rose Island swimming pool because we believe when this place was active that this was probably where all the action was taking place. So I'm thinking tonight if we are looking for answers, maybe we'd want to be where the action was at, a place that people really missed and cherished and loved here. Uh, as I said in my short, if you guys had seen that, we didn't want to start off at the castle because we don't really know a lot about it. We haven't been up on top of that hill to see the ruins. It was hard enough getting down here as it was. And there's so much here. Like I say, I believe that more of the energy is going to be here. So I am very interested in Prince Maddox. And we will talk about him here tonight because this is a very small island. So I'm sure they were all over this place and we could talk to the Welsh. But um, I'm thinking that this, I'm really here for Rose Island right now. And we are standing in the center of the Rose Island pool right now. So, you know, as you can see, um, we're right dead smack in the center of the pool. So the center of the activity, I hope. I will let you, we're gonna do the dousing rods. And then since it's in the, you know, it's dusk and you guys can hopefully see these rods. And then tonight, as it start, the sun starts to go down more, we'll begin this, the investigation. I want you to be able to see the lights and so forth. But let's go ahead and get some, uh, get some things going. We'll get things livened up with the dousing rods. It seems like we have a lot better luck if we start with the dousing rods. I don't know why. Um, you know, maybe it's because we start the investigation early, investigation early and maybe things, energy ramps up as the night goes. I don't know. I happen to think that uh, if a place is haunted, it's probably haunted all the time. But anyway, that's why we do these things. You know, we ask questions, we learn, document things. You guys leave in the comments what you think, things that can help me in my investigation to maybe find, you know, answers. It, maybe d doing the dousing rods first isn't the way to go, but let's just check things out and see. Okay, if there's anybody out here that wants to talk to us tonight, these rods that I have in my hand, you can move them. And when I ask you yes and no questions, you can cross them for yes, and then open them wide for no. Yeah, just like, just like, just like that. You don't want to do this? They just open them. Straighten them back out. Straighten them back out. See, it's not even dark yet, you guys. All right. All right. So are you, will you guys, do you guys mind talking to us tonight? I don't know if you remember, we were here maybe a month ago, if that. You guys went, wasn't really, really talkative on the devices, but you were, you, you moved these pretty well. So, so would you mind talking to us tonight? Cross them for yes, open them for no. There you go. Okay. All right, well, I'm glad to know that. Um, we have devices on the table that has lights on it. 
Will you, do you think you'll be able to light those lights up tonight? Now we did see one of the balls over there light up, but it was very, very bright out, so it's hard to see. You did that? <laughs> you see that? You see that fan? They're totally crossed. And I don't know about anybody else that's had experience with these dowsing rods, but it feels like magnets pulling together. It's kind of odd. Okay, so is there people here that used to swim in this pool? Whoever is here right now, was you here when this was a swimming pool? When, when it was Rose Island, a park? They're shaking. Okay. So I don't know if there's anybody here when it was a park or not, but maybe you're trying to give me another answer. You, you've probably heard us talking while we're here. It's, it just said yes. Okay, thank you. All right. So I think you kind of know where our interests are tonight. Is whoever we're speaking to right now, are you one of the Welsh settlers? It's kind of swinging to the no. No, it's swinging no. Okay, okay, I got you. So I'm a little bit confused. You didn't say anything when I asked you about, oh, are you, are you maybe the owner of Rose Island? Is this the owner of Rose Island? It's moving to no. Oh, it's swinging good to no. Okay. Hmm. Were you, did you, oh, did you happen to live in, did you maybe live in one of the cottages here? Somebody lived in the cottage. Okay. Now we don't really know much about the park. I'd love to know a lot more. It's one of the reasons we're here to learn about you and your history and to learn about the history of this area. So was you also an employee here? Is that an employee? Huh. It would make sense if they, I mean, if they're, if you could buy those cottages that the people that lived in them worked on the, worked in the theme park, I mean, that would make sense. So, okay, I had some other questions, but I guess no need for that now. Um, did you ever, did you ever ride on the steamboat? Yes. Okay. Um, did you come here f from Indiana? Hmm. Did you ride the steamboat here from Kentucky? I'll tell you what I really want to know. Did you, did you, was you in the flood in 1937? Whoa, okay, okay, okay. That makes it very, very personal. And I'll do the best I can to, uh, to give you respect as long as you're something respectable. Um, did you lose family members in that flood? Oh, yep. Yeah. That's such a sad story, too. As they're moving, like, one of the rods. I mean, sometimes, like, both of them move a little bit, but one will move more than the other. Um, yes, it did. <laughs> it said no. All right. So, so did you pass away in that flood? Did you drown? Hmm. 
no, oh, no action at all. Um, we're, let's go into yes. Hold on, just wait a minute. Let me let me ask again, okay? So we're clear. Did you drown in the flood? Yes, so it says. So was this was this pool a very busy place when Rose Island was open as a theme park? There you go. Okay. Uh, were you aware at one time this was an, a place to hold ammunition for war, World War II? Wow, yes. So, hmm. so you... So you have been aware of your surroundings this whole time. You you've been on this have you was you have you been on this property since the park closed? Yes. So they're aware of time. All right guys, well, I mean there you have it. I don't know what all information I could gander past that i mean um you know if the questions were a little bit more loose and they weren't all going down one path i would i would ask more questions and explore a little bit more and try to find out who we're talking to but it sounds pretty clear that it was someone that lived in these cottages they drowned here during the flood and they've been aware of their surroundings since they passed so i mean that seems pretty formidable to me that seems like good evidence so um let's go ahead and stop this here for a minute and as soon as it starts to get a little darker maybe we'll kick up the second half of this investigation i may not be able to wait because it seems like things are already active before we got set up it was too bright to see i think i think we might i think sandy may have gotten a short video of it or a picture but one of the cat balls lit up when it was daylight out uh, you could hardly see the light but it was lighting up and i've got them inside these like dome jars they have a lid on it so the wind uh, can't affect it, people can't affect it. You know, if that cat ball, and sound is not likely to get in there, they, they don't operate by sound anyway, but even if it did, you can see that because I have a jar around it, you know? So we try to eliminate as many um, false positives as we can. And that thing's in the jar and lit up during the day. So you be the judge. Well, we'll see you in a minute, we get this set up. Hey guys, while it's still a little bit light out, I want to show you our setup, what we've got for tonight, what we're going to be working with. If you want to come on in, check this out. This is something that my daughter and my fiance made for me. Check this box out. Is that not cool? Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a little offering here and put this stone in it and to keep it from falling over. Okay. I don't really, I don't get into stones and all that, but to me, this is a lucky charm for me. You know, like I say, my daughter and, and Sandy made this for me and I just love it. So I keep it on me with the investigations. All right. Tonight we got the SB7 and I got a cool, cool little device from Gary Galka. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. You guys can see him on my Twitter if you want to head over and check it out on Twitter. But we got an ANC Mini we're going to try tonight. And um, this is a noise reducer for the SB7, so we can get rid of some of that static. I've never used it before. This is the first time tonight. So let's see how this works out for us. Hopefully, hopefully we serve him well. But um, we'll go ahead and get this antenna out. And then, um, of course, we got the K2 meter. And we have, I think, three apps. We got Spirit Talker and um, ghost tube and necrophonic setup. And then we got the rim pod. 
We're not gonna, we didn't bring everything tonight. This is ridiculous trying to get back here. And if you come over here, we have a cat ball in the center of the tables. I'm gonna stand over here. We got a cat ball here and a cat ball at the other end of the table. And this is the one that went off in the daylight, you guys. This is the one that went off. And then we have a little motion sensor to device that I'm gonna turn on right now and get it set up. So anyway, give us a second and we'll get right to it. All right, fam, here we go. We're back in the center of the pool again. I wanted to bring out the um, spirit box to see what we get out here. I've got the thing on that redu the ANC Mini that reduces the sound a little bit, but uh, you'll still get some of the scratching. But I wanna play with it so I can get used to it where we can hear the most words. I don't wanna sacrifice the words. So, a little while ago we were speaking And somebody that lived in the cottages was speaking to us. Are you still here? Yes, yes, it sounded like it said twice. And you guys, if this is too loud, too obnoxious in the microphone, let me know and the next time I'll adjust it. So, when I had the rods in my hand, you guys were asking, I had to ask you yes, no questions. Why? Because it was the only way I had to communicate with you. Now I have a device that you can speak through and I can hear your voice. If you have anything further you want to add, I'll be able to hear you now. Do you understand that? So, is it true that you lived in the cottages here? Sound like I said I'm Bob. I was getting ready to say, I didn't even say, I was getting ready to say, is there any way you could tell me your name? Did I say Rick and Bob? I heard Bob. That's kind of a little freaky. My um uh, yeah, I I lost somebody, my my dad, my um, and his name was Bob, so it's kind of odd would get that come through, but I, I don't put any thing into that really and I would not talk to my family on here to each their own it's just not something I do so wow so, so I want to I want to go ahead and ask you directly what is your name can you tell me your name please Were you an employee here at Rose Island? Did you drown here? Do you? That was the same voice a couple times. And this, by the way, you guys, is sweeping backwards. I've got it set at uh, 200 in reverse. So, uh, were you aware that there were Welsh, Welsh settlers on this island? Is Prince Maddox here? Is there, is Prince Maddox here? Sound like a yep. Yeah. All right. So, so maybe those stories are true. Is it true that the six skeletons they found here had on real suits of armor from the Welsh? This thing all of a sudden started getting a little crazy. Did you hear that sentence? You guys, I hope you guys can hear this. I, I don't know how close to get it to this microphone. I don't want to blow your eardrums, but I want you guys to be able to capture this. If you guys wear headphones. Florna, Martha, I know you guys are watching this. Check this out for me. 
Joshua, check us out, man. You guys got that gift. So did you lose family in the flood? Did you swim in... I'm gonna try to mess with the settings on this a little bit. All right. Does this, does, I've heard another full sentence. Can you say that again, please? Can you say that again, please? Rachel? That's crazy, man. Did, did you say Rachel? Yes, that was a man's voice that said Rachel. Um, I don't know what to think about that as a man saying the name Rachel. Is Rachel somebody that you lost? Was Rachel a family member? Or is Rachel someone trying to come through and talk? That was a girl's voice that said hello. Hello. Did you used to live here on Rose Island? I did. I did. I'm starting to feel a little bit claustrophobic. I got chills on my left arm, both cheeks on my face. Um, wow, I'm pretty impressed by that. So, Rachel, did you have kids here? This had to be a wonderful place for kids. I couldn't imagine. Did they swim in this pool? Sound like he said a hole. You're weird. Let's keep it keep it uh, positive, can we? Is there coyotes on this island? Yes. I'm going to try to lower this a little bit more and see what we get. By that, I mean take out some more of the static. He said scrolling or something. All right. All right. Can you talk to me a little bit? I want to see if I can still hear you. Who's Who are we speaking to right now? How many spirits are out here? Something said fifty. Can you tell? Or can you tell me how many spirits are out here? Well, you seem pretty eager to talk. I have some devices over here on the table that light up when you get near them. Would you be willing to touch them tonight to show us you're here? Okay, what was your job here? Can you tell me what your can you tell me what your job here was? Hold on, I'm gonna walk over here for just a second. This park was really, really big. They must have had a lot of employees. Yeah. What was your responsibility here? You guys, I think we're going to go over here. If you want to follow us over to the table, we're going to go over here and see if we can't maybe open up one of the apps and get any, any evidence or anybody speaking to us. I mean, those apps, I, I didn't have a lot of faith in them, to be quite honest with you. But, I mean, it does seem like we get evidence. I mean, it seems a little bit more than coincidence, a lot of bit more than coincidence, but that verdict's still out, so we'll, we'll see. We'll check it out tonight. Come on. All 
All right, you guys willing to have some fun? Rachel, you ready to have some fun? Prince Maddox, are you still here? I get that same girl's voice. There's one guy that comes up multiple times. Sounds like the exact same voice. Prince Maddox, are you still here? Okay, I'm gonna shut you guys, I'm gonna shut this device off for a minute, okay? We're gonna shut this off and then uh, we'll turn on some of these other devices and see if we can't communicate that away. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Put this up, turn the thing off. Oh, sorry guys, I keep putting it next to that microphone. Can I borrow your light? You don't have to get, I don't want, I don't want them having to look up my nose or nothing. Nobody wants that. All right. Yeah, you guys, I love this. I, hey, thanks a lot, Gary. I love that ANC Mini, man. That helps a lot. That seems like it's going to be very useful. I'm shocked. This is our first time out with it. I've not practiced with it or anything. That's nice. All right. Check out the light. Of course, I can't see anything. Let's go ahead and pause this for a minute, you guys, till I get this light set up. Okay. Hey, guys. I was trying to get this stuff set up before we got going, and this REM pod's going nuts. Look at this already. I'm going to see if I can reset it. Can you guys back off of this so I don't have to reset it? Back off of it so I know it's you. Stop lighting this up so I know it's you, please. I don't know what's going on right now. Hold on. Let me move this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move it. All right. Now you guys know it's not this stuff. Let me see if I can reset this. There we go. Stop for just a minute. Stop for a minute. Thank you. Now, if there's a spirit that's doing that, would you light those lights up again, please? You guys see, I didn't reset it. Will you guys go ahead and touch those lights for me again? I know, there we, oh man, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is crazy. This is crazy. We didn't get these responses the last time we were here, guys. There's, I guess it was fate that I didn't put that video out. All right, the closer you get, the closer you guys get to that device, the more lights will light up. Can you get closer to that metal thing on top? Can you get closer to that light? Just reach down and touch that light. The closer you get, the more lights light up. If you touch it, they all light up. It'll start screaming at us and making a bunch of noise. Would you mind touching that for me, please? That device, oh, here goes the K2. The device that's flashing now is called a REM pod. Just so you guys know, when I, re when I talk about this device, I will call it a REM pod. This device is called a K2, okay? And this one here will light up, but it doesn't make noise. It, it, it goes from, yellow, or from green to yellow to orange to red. The closer you get to it, the, closer, the more those lights light up, the closer to red it'll get. So you start to get close to it, it'll light up to yellow, you get closer to be orange, you get closer than that, and you touch it, it'll light up red. The other device makes noises by temperature changes and by your proximity to the rim pod. The closer you are to it, the more lights light up. Down the table, in the middle of the table, in those glass jars, there's balls in there with lights in it. They're in that jar so that nothing else can affect them but you. You can reach in there and touch those balls, move those balls, and light them up. There's another one at the far end of the table, and I'll warn you now, there's a device down there that will scare the bejeebies out of you uh, when you walk in front of it, because it'll, it'll alert and let us know that you're down there, right, right next to that ball that lights up in the jar. And we have another device down here that uh, is like the one that we used a few minutes ago. It's just in a different, it's a different format. It's a different way of talking to us. When I turn that on, you'll be able to talk to us through that. Do you understand? Light up the rim pot if you understand. I tell you what, you're already lighting that up. Can you light this K2 meter up for us? If you understand what I said to you? 
Will you please light this K2 meter up for me, please? And guys, I really appreciate the information coming through quickly. You know, the more I can find out, the quicker I can find things out, the quicker we can get out of here. And if you guys want us to get out of here and leave you alone, let's go ahead and get to this and light up these devices and have a good conversation and then we'll leave. We'll pack up and leave. Is that okay? Do you want us to leave? Do you want us to stay here? Light up either one of these devices if you want us to stay. Light up either one of these devices if you would like for us to go. Temperature. Okay, can you reach over and touch that REM pod, please? Are you blowing on that? Are you touching it? I'm just curious how the temperature gauge went off, if that was you or not. Will you touch the REM pod to let us know? This place is weird, man. I mean, it's really weird. I seen, I think, one bird on the ground on this island. We walked all through the woods off the, path, off the paths, kind of exploring, looking for foundations. And um, I didn't see no snakes. I did see a box turtle, I have to say. A box turtle and a bird, and that was it. I mean, this place is like eerily quiet all day long. Uh, one couple did venture down this way. We got to speak to one couple. Other than that, that's it. Now it's the middle of the night. On an island with only one way in and one way out. You guys, you just don't even want, this place is nuts. All right, I'm going to turn this device on now. Now, this is the device that you can actually speak to us, okay? Okay, it's on now, so if you'd like to say anything, you can say it into this device, okay? Is there anybody out here that would like to speak to us tonight? We're both nice people. You can just ask me and I'll tell you. And by the way, you guys, tonight when we go to leave, nobody is to go with us. This equipment, you don't attach to it. You don't attach to us. We, the only time you're going to see us is when we come here. You've got to stay. Is that Prison. clear? Prison. Prison? This isn't, I mean, I don't know why you're held here. I don't know why you would refer to it as a prison, but you can't get out of here through us. You have to, you have to stay here. You just, whatever you do, you cannot go with us. You don't have to stay here. You can do whatever you do but you're just not going to go with us. You, you are not welcome to attach to us or our equipment or anything we bought, brought. Is that clear? Come on, you got a way to talk to me now? You can use words to speak to me. You have a K2 meter to light up. You just have to touch it or you can touch the REM pod. We've, already, we've discussed that and there's two. Old. Oh, dude. <laughs> Even the spirit said I'm too old to do YouTube. Y'all can just kiss off um we have two balls that light up if you touch it and that device i would love for you to walk past that device on the end of the table it'll make a sound and let us know that you walk past it i would love for you to do that can you walk past the end of the tables here you guys have been doing really good can we kind of can we keep that up Prince Maddox, are you alright? Abandoned. Right? Yep, this how you like that abandoned. Yeah, this whole park was abandoned. There was a really bad flood here. Were you aware of that? That was him. That was him, and the temperature went off. The temperature went off right when it said that. I think there's something up with that temperature thing. I mean, ever since we've got that, I think we've gotten more out of that. And it changes it on response. So I don't think it's the temperature. Edward. Edward. That's not a name that I remember. I don't remember that when we were looking at the park. What was the other name that we got a little while ago besides Bob? There was a uh, Rachel. Yeah. Is Rachel still here? Is Prince Maddox here or Rachel? Thank you for that communication, by the way. 
Is it cold where you're at? Man, I've got like a, I've got a little ghost that looks like it's made out of pearl. I think I might have left it here last time. That stinks because I really like that. There's a little, little ghost, look like an opal. Is Prince Maddox here? All right, guys, I've got another device here. If I could see it. I have another device here. And in this device, I can catch your actual voice. So that way, when I play it back, I'll be able to hear what you've said. And guys, I don't know if I'll be able to have you listen to it or not. Uh, no, I don't want to set it on the ground. It's hard for me to bend over. I'm too old for that. But I'm going to try to record your voice in this. I'll ask you questions. You can speak into this, and hopefully I'll be able to hear it. And if we can hear it, we can hear it. If not, if I find anything, I'll play it for you guys. Okay. Prince Maddox, are you available to speak? Are you here? Did you have a castle here on the island? They call it the devil's backbone. Do you know why? Do you have treasures buried around this island? There's rumors that there's lost treasure here somewhere. Is that true? Is there a Rachel out here tonight? Rachel, did you live in the cottages? I just heard screaming and there's no people around here. Over to my left. Is that you making those screaming? Dorothy. No Dorothy. Dorothy, was that you screaming? We heard you. That made my skin crawl. I mean, we're deep, 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 deep in the woods. And only one way out of here. And everybody knows it. Is this person I was speaking to earlier here? The man that said he works here? Are you hearing that screaming? Mm-hmm. Like a over and over and over. I gotta stop this. You guys, I'll play this later or something, but this is getting creepy. Time to start getting into protection mode a little bit here. Hey, you guys, while I'm breaking these out, this is the Olight Marauder Mini. This is a little light I got with it. This little thing. Check this out. Look at this. Can you show back here so we can see? Look at this light, you guys. This is a little two inch light lighting up all of that. Now check out its. Check out its big brother. This is the dim setting. You double click it and boom, look at that. Something's wrong. Then you flip the switch spotlight now hold in on it red we're going to be using these lights a little bit to take pictures i hope it's starting to get crazy i don't know if i'm going to get to it but um, the different wavelengths of light supposedly and scientifically will um, affect things differently it Aff affects the, the environment differently and the red waves will disrupt white waves and so will the blue and I don't know exactly all the science behind it, but we read enough to know that we want to try to experiment and see if we can capture any apparitions. Hold it again. Look at that, a green light. Hold it again. 
switches to a blue light. Double click, dim. It's nice. And if you look, hold on, let me get it back to white. And then if you look at this, can you see that? It's got a little dial on it. So you could dial in how much dimness and how much brightness you want. There's lights on the side that tells you how much battery you got. It's rechargeable and there's lights on the other side that tells you how bright the light is. So you could roll the wheel and make it as dim and bright as you want. Just wanted you to see that. It's by Olight. All right, so a minute ago it just said something. Pain. Is that, ooh, something's wrong and pain. Um, so was you in a lot of pain when you passed? I've heard that it's very painful to drown. Is that true? Is it very painful to drown? Is that what happened to you? I don't know you guys, this is kind of creepy. This is very, very creepy. All right, you guys have went quiet on me. This is kind of strange. Can we light up any of these devices for me one more time? If you want us to leave, light up one of these devices for me, please. You guys have spoken to us a lot today and I appreciate that. But Chairs. I, chairs. I don't, did you hear that? I did, that was close. That was a big slam. You starting to think we ought to get out of here? Uh, yeah. Oh, there's something coming. Hello? Ill. Ill. Hello? It's right back there by where the bridge is at, too. Hello? We need to pack up. Um, you don't have the legs out on that. Hey, you guys, we're gonna have to cut this one short. There's something big out here. And we're starting to get, oh, there goes the rim pod. Look. My name. What's your name? Don't come any closer. <laughs>